Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Sorcery. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that it's just to join me today as we cut through the forest up to the tower that is over there, and I believe is the tower of the wizard that we uh, heard of last episode. So you walk back through the trees and rejoin the main path. The trees echo with birdsong. You push on through the trees. Yes, they do echo with beautiful, beautiful birdsong. Let's go over here and see. Ooh, we have a map. Very nice. The trees thin out, leaving only bare rock. The sun continues to climb the steep sky. Uh, yeah, let's go right ahead. This was once perhaps uh, the cone of a volcano. Now it is a wide, dusty stone bowl, but it is not empty. In the center stands a circular dwelling with a steeply pitched canvas roof. Uh, okay. Um, hmm. I, why would I want to cast a spell here? That probably is going to screw up. My, my chances here. He's gonna sense the magic or something. You glance around the wide pit of the old volcano, but there is little to be seen. No doubt the ash mixed in the dust is what makes the forest you saw on the slope so lush and verdant. At least it seems fairly in unlikely the volcano will erupt again. Cold winds claw at your skin. Man, the winds... I think the winds are some... There's something going on with the winds here. Uh, because we... It's... I don't know what it means. I don't just... I just don't know what it means. The wind whistles across the top of the mountain, and I deliberately chose not to cast a spell there because things might go badly. Let's go in here. You approach the hut. Its walls are made of painted wooden planks, well set into the rock below. This is no temporary shack or traveler's tent. A little thin smoke is rising from the stack. Hmm. I could cast a spell here. Uh, but I, if it's dang, I'm gonna need to go in there, so it doesn't matter if it's danger, because I was gonna cast how, or, is it how, or hot? I don't, now hot would burn down the shack, that would be bad. Let's look around the hut. You walk a circle around the hut. To one side of it, you find a smooth chimney of rock carved into the mountainside, leading us as straight as an arrow to the valley floor far below. The few loose stumble, the few loose stones stumble over the sheer drop to the east and disappear. Let's knock on the hut door. <clears throat> you approach the door and and knock. From inside, a wizened voice calls, You're late. Stop wasting my time. Um, intrigued by the voice's words, you open the door and step inside to low, the low hut. Inside the hut, your vision is lost in gloomy darkness. Let us suppose, a croaking voice declares, that I am a sorcerer and you are a sorcerer too. Do you know which of us is the more powerful? Um, there is no contest, you declare. It is I. Just so, replies the voice. A moment later, there is a snatch of music, and suddenly your legs and arms jerk upwards, then fall still. What was that? There is another burst of music, and your legs begin to kick and pirouette you around. You are dancing. Let's stand still. That's not gonna go well, but yeah. You try to hold your body still, but it is useless. It is not what your limbs are. It's not that your limbs are under external control, but rather the compulsion of to dance, like the compulsion to sneeze, is so strong you cannot resist for more than a moment. I see you are not powerful enough to counter that. The voice remarks. The music stops, and you collapse into a nearby chair. I know the spell. You hear the speaker rise and approach. A wizened, calloused hand is offered. Welcome. I mean you no harm, as you can tell by my advanced age. I probably should have cast the danger. <laughs> I'm gonna say greetings. The speaker nods. Gentle light is filling the hut, and you can now see the sorceress, a woman so ancient that her features are lost within a, a mess of wrinkles. She smiles as you look at her. I could be anybody under all these years, could I not? She remarks. Who are you? She smiles. My name is Bria. I'm a sorceress, once of the High Zaman, though I left that place some time ago. You are welcome. Again, you are welcome. That's interesting. Um, are you from High Zaman? You are. I trained in the fortress, she says, as all the true sorcerers of this land do. I might be from there myself, because I'm a sorceress, my, a sorcerer myself. She nods. You are worried, but please, the Archmage of the Fortress was not always as he is now. Can you tell me of the Archmage? You begin. She nods. Imagine, if you will, a country of great peace and prosperity, ruled over by a group of wise and powerful sorcerers and sorceresses. They tended the fields, managed the weather, healed the sick. They chose their leader by an arcane process. Any child from the land might become that leader and be taught their role from an early age. Huh. Sounds idyllic. 
It worked well enough, yes, she sighs. Imagine the Archmage as a peacemaker, teacher, but also a thinker, a discoverer of many secrets of the stars. He looked too far, this Archmage. What do you mean? You continue. I was his farseer, she says. He asked me to see further, deeper, than anyone had ever before. He sought to protect the land, so I looked a thousand years ahead. But I will not tell you what I saw. It did no good to him, nor to me. She gestures you to sit down and takes a seat herself. Yeah, so we're still back in the old days, in Ishtara, or Ish Ishkatla, whatever the, the name of that is. Uh, so that's a thousand years she looked at. She looked at my time, or the time ahead, anyway. Um, what future did you see, you demand? She looks uncomfortable for a moment, then decides to answer. Stranger, what future do you suppose he saw? The one you are living. You are on your way to kill the Archmage, are you not? Well, I seek to recover the crown, that is all. She narrows her eyes suspiciously at you. Every archmage is so chosen in esoteric ways, she replies, and will say no more on it. She the old woman stands suddenly and goes over to a side table. Tea? Hmm, thank you. She gnaws and boils a pan of water by holding it between her hand, uh, palms for a moment. She drops a pat of goat butter in and stirs it around and pours out two ceramic cups. Let's drink mine. Let's be... Let's be friendly here. I think she is friendly. You lift the cup uh, to your lips and drink deep. It is warm and rich and refreshing. And that was health that, that we, if we needed, we could have had. Uh, but there we go. Uh, let's ask about the serpents. What do you know of the seven serpents, you ask, sipping at your tea? They are the Archmage's servants, she replies. But even they cannot travel the backlands without, without falling foul of its terrible curse. I see that you search them. Oh, wait a minute. I, I'm, I'm supposed to search them in the past? Actually, that makes total sense. That makes total sense. Because... It makes total sense. Because the Archmage saw the future. He... No, he doesn't know I'm coming. Something... No, I don't really understand how this goes, but... Hmm. Let's see. They are Archmage servants, but they cannot travel the backlands. I see that you search for them. Yes, I do. Uh, do you know where uh, they are? I have seen a few things, she answers. The earth serpent lies in wait in a fissure near the great lake Ilka Ilklala. So I know, let me write it down, the earth, and I don't know what it, what, how we, I can kill it. So the earth is um, in a fissure uh, near lake, I'm writing it down by the way, that's why I'm kind of saying it like this. Il, I believe that's Ilkal Ilklala, man, the names... The names, just too many upward slashes over there. And the Serpent of Time. Oh, I didn't know there was one of time. Now we know five. There's the fire, water, moon, earth, and time. And we might have one for f oil and another one for sand. Um, because those are the things that kill the, uh, the water and the fire, respectively. Um, so time, right there. And the Serpent of Time, he is the worst of the seven. Swift and all but indestructible. Okay, that's not good. Um, does he have a weakness? You ask. He does, though I do not know it. It is a secret known only to the Marsh Goblins, if you can find him. You thank her. Okay, so the time, that's gonna be a problem. So the Marsh... Oh, the guys that attack... Yeah. The guys that attacked uh, the the uh, Carrey City. Yep. Marsh Goblins. No. Write it down right there. We might have... The, the clues are gonna be written in our journal. Well, it's gonna be fine. Uh, you thank her. She regards you with a narrow, thoughtful... With narrow, thoughtful eyes. There is one other thing perhaps you do not know about the Serpents. What is that, you demand? Some creatures in this land are accidental. They are formed by chance, but not all. Some were always intended to be. Their design is visible in the wider world. The serpents are such creatures. Their existence was predicated by the placement of the stars themselves. Huh. You're talking riddles. You complain. I'm a sorceress, she replies hotly. It is a simple thing. The stars are the source of all magic, and the magic they provide defines us. There are spells for strength, and, seep, and speed, and sleep, for death, and fire, and thought, and there are things all life shares. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So I have, uh, she doesn't mention oil or sand, so I don't think these are the things that kill the, the serpents. Hmm. So... There are spells of strength and speed and sleep for death and fire and thought. There are things all life shares. 
What has this to do with serpents? She leans forward and eyes shining. There is a spell in the stars for the seven serpents alone. Consider that. The universe up there has aligned itself for their existence down here. Do you know the spell? The spell for their... Ex what? Tell it to me. I will give you no advantage on them, she says. But it may yet be useful to you. Oh, it will give me it, it give you no advantage on them. It may yet be useful. She traces three curved lines on the tabletop. The spell is woven from three stars. From Sa, Sasara, and Sifax. And it requires a ring to shape. A ring carved with the shape of a serpent. I have it. Like this one. Remarkably so, she agrees. What does it do? It will force the serpents to speak, to answer your questions. It will not control or destroy them, but it may yet be a great of great assistance. You nod. The SSS spell has been added to your spellbook. She winces suddenly, the hot tea is dripping from a crack in her teacup. Cheap pottery rubbish, she grumbles, digging up a small pot of glue from a, a box and repairing it. She leaves the glue pot on the table. I could take it. You pick up the pot of glue and put it into your backpack without another word. The sorceress watches you with some amusement, though you cannot think why. She stands. I am tiring of you. You should go, she says bluntly. But first, she raises a finger and points. One more thing, the woman adds. If you are traveling to High Zaman to face the Archmage, hadn't you best know a little of the higher functions of magic? What are they? Magic is drawn from the patterns of the of stars. Starlight can be shaped to alter our world, like hooking the threads of a tapestry with your fingernails. But for every bend in one direction, there is, there is opposite bend. For every one magic, there is another that undoes it. Oh, okay, so... Spells can be countered without the spells. You exclaim, just so, she replies. Can you teach me? I can take a lifetime to discover it can take a lifetime to discover the pairings and to master them, but I can show you something simple. She raises a finger adorned with a wide collection of rings. One, made of green metal, begins to pulse, but she does not fire right away. She is giving you a moment to react. Uh wait, wait, wait. She raises a finger adorned with a wide collection of rings. One, made of green metal. There's a green ring. There's a spell for a green ring. Begins to pulse, but she does not fire right away. She's giving you a moment to react. So I need to counter this. Oh, uh, okay, so I know, I, I, there's a way. I go into the spell book, and we can see what spell requires a, gin, a green ring. Um, so it's going to be easily to, easy to tell. Serpent ring right there, SSS. Um, requires one gold piece right there. Uh, so beeswax right here. Uh, requires a bamboo flute that we might, could have gotten. What is this one? When cast a recipient, will get an uncontrollable urge to dance. That's what she cast on me. Huh, yeah, that's what she cast on me. Uh, the goblin's tooth, creating, yeah, uh, requires a goblin, a giant's tooth, I got that. A vial of glue, now I have this, casting this spell on a, vi a vial of glue will cause the glue to become super sticky. Sufficient to stick creatures to the floor or to the walls by throwing the vial at the creature's feet or by resting it on top of the door so that it falls uh, when the door is open. Um, but uh, this thing, oh, actually, why is it that? That's weird. Um, but this thing, the vial of glue might be used for other things as well, like to fix crystal balls if we find them or something um, because we found some broken ones and I might I think the glue might be able might be usable for that uh, in the I'm, I'm talking about the part two so we got how to over there requires a medicinal potion stamina requires a pebble a potent little spell yeah I don't know how many pebbles I have um, what is this one for fog yeah requires scent man the soundtrack is loud uh, <laughs> at least for me for you uh, not so much uh, so let's see, it requires a black face mask. I have that already, don't I? The Gak. Casting this spell, black face will create a terrible... Yeah, I have that, because it's burned out. The skull cap over here. Oh my god, the drawings. Um, stamina, jewel of gold, gold back mirror. Kin. In battle, a gold back mirror must be pointed at a creature when this uh, spell is cast, and an exact replica of the enemy will then be created under the caster's control. However, should either creature die, both will disappear. Oh, that's pretty interesting. That's how it's used. I didn't know that. It requires fire water for pap. Uh, I'm just looking. Gale horn over here. Stone dust. These are all new stuff. The brass pendulum. Pearl ring. Bracelet. Green haired wig. Uh, green ring right there. This spell enables the caster to teleport a short distance. Transportation can occur through soft materials such as wood and clay, but not through the stone or metal. 
This spell requires a ring of, of green metal from Kraken Rock, but is somewhat unreliable and can have disastrous results. Okay, so how can I counter this? Uh, transportation can occur through materials, but not through stone or metal. So I would need something that creates that, and that's the far... Um, and that's the Z over here that we have never been able to cast. I don't really know if we can or what is supposed to do. Um, so, uh, cast the spell. Let's see what I can do. Okay. We don't have that many. One of these might be, or one of these should ha should be the thing. So we got the gum, which creates glue. That could work, but I don't think it's gonna... That's the first thing I thought, actually, especially because we got that. Uh, we got the invisibility here. No, we got the yap, which is talk with animals. That's not gonna... I don't think that's uh, that's enough or it. Uh, so we got the Z over here with a zap. Yeah, that, that would work, but that's not it. And we have the zip, which causes teleportation and requires the green ring. That's what she's gonna cast. Um, and we have the force field over here. But this might not... Oh, magic resistance! I don't have it. Uh, we have the dumb, which causes clumliness. Not sure. And we have the da, those, which causes slowness. And the dub, which opens locks and doors. None of these are what I want. Um, and I think I've gone through all of them. I think I've gone through all of them. How can I do this? What? Uh, let's ask this. What do I do? Counter my spell of teleportation, she insists. I've already given you the clue as to what the spell you need. Her ring burns with green light. Uh, what spell you need? You, are, you have mere moments. Have you given me the clue? Oh my god, how can I do that then? So, let's see. Tapestry... But every bend in one direction, there is an opposite bend. For every one magic, there's another. Um, it's the glue. It's gotta be the glue. That's what she gave me. Yeah, it's gotta be the glue. That's kinda weird that it is, because you'd think teleportation would unglue me from things, but maybe it is. Uh, so let's go with uh, gum over here, which I believe is the one that we look for. Yeah, create glue. Let's go with that. And that's the glue she gave me. Consulting the constellations above, you bind the spell and toss the glue over your own feet. You feel it binding your boots to the floor. The sorceress smiles as she completes her spell, firing at you with her green ringed finger. Oh, what is my fate there is what happens when we die. But we didn't die. Holy crap, you stare her, you stare her magic in the face, but nothing happens. Bria, the sorceress, nods. Very good. Every magic has a counter magic. The spell of gluing opposes the enchantment of teleportation. Your own spell has evaporated as well. Your boots move freely once more. Prepare yourself, Bria declares. She shows you an open palm filled with rock dust. Okay. I think I know what that is for. I could pray for aid. Um, uh, but uh, let's first look at our spells here. Because she's not going to tell me what that is. Um, so rock dust. Let's just look for stuff that requires stuff. Uh, and uh, giant tooth, goblin tooth, vial of glue, medicinal. I think I might have some rock, rock dust, or it could be, it could be. Uh, I think I saw one actually, like a special sort of dust, stone dust, right there. Special stone dust must be thrown to the creature at this spell. Within seconds, the intended victim will petrify, quickly becoming a gray sta stone statue. That's really not good. He doesn't tell me how to um, how to counter it though. But let's go in here. Yes, we we're inside the hut. Um, let's cast a spell. The question here is, do I have the required spell? Is she trying to kill me? I don't think she is. Uh, so we have the huff. That might work, and actually that kind of should, because it's gonna blow away the rock dust. And that's an interesting way of just telling you that, uh, causes stupidity. Um, it's an interesting way that t lets you just be creative with the way you counter spells. We got Jig here that uh, causes lively dancing. Of course, we need a bamboo flute. That's what she cast on me. I don't think I know how to do that. I made the glue might might work. Float in the air. That's not going to work against this thing. Uh, we don't have that many spells, actually. Uh, we do have a W over here for a wall. An invisible barrier. That is not going to work, I don't think. It could. Uh, but I think the Huff is going to be... the. It probably is the other way of, of, uh, of uh, fixing this situation if you don't have the Galehorn. So let's go with that. 
the wind, uh, you wind the stars into order around you, pulling out the gale horn, intending to blow the rock dust away. But you cannot complete the spell fast enough. The witch tosses a rock, to rock dust over you and begins to wind the spell. I fear this may hurt, she remarks, but if, if it is any consolation, you make an excellent addition to my statue garden. Yeah, I think I am going to die now. Um, and she really wants to kill me. So she is a really mean lady. I think I, I'm not going to be able to do anything here. Um, so we got the jig here. Uh, the wall is not gonna work. Yeah, we don't have anything. Um, the float in the air. I think dim here might work. Causes stupidity. You craft a spell, hoping to addle the sorceress into confusion. It does no good. Oh boy. Bria's spell takes hold. You feel yourself stif stiffening up as though drying out after a swim. Your skin becomes taut, and your eyes fix into a stare. You feel suddenly terribly cold. How? It's gonna be a bad thing because I'm need to. Re I'm gonna need to replay through all of this. But yeah, I have just been added to a stone garden. Rest in peace. Well, I'll be right back to the same exact position that I was in because I need to reload this thing. And after much trying, because I tried wall, didn't work. I found the spell. I found the proper spell, and it's it's a pain because I need to get back back over here. Uh, so I'm gonna cast the spell here, and yeah, I'm back where she's gonna blow the stone into my face, uh, and uh, that's bad. So the proper spell here is fall. Why? I don't know. I didn't read what happened, but I know I did. I didn't die. So there we go. You wind the stars into order around you, feeling your body weight shifting to a mere fraction of normal, just as Bria's spell of petrification begins to take hold. The two forces, one turning you to air, the other to stone, fight within you, but with decreasing force moment by moment. Eventually, your body returns to normal. Bria nods. Yes, indeed. The spell of lightness is, it, it, it negates, is negated by that of petrification. The counter has uh, been recorded in your spellbook. Oh, that's nice. The sorceress did do uh, sits down once more. You have learned enough, she declares. You must leave, but not without a gift. She slides the ri the ring of <gasps> the the green of the ring of green metal from her fingers and holds it out to you. I will take it. You take the ring swiftly and slide it in onto your finger. You feel a pulse through your own through your veins. I wish you well, she says. Now be gone. Oh my. Oh, that's nice. She told. Oh, that's nice. That's the reach. That's the um, that's the earth. That's the earth uh, serpent right there. I think. I I can't really tell. It doesn't look like it's made of earth, but that's the earth serpent, I believe. I asked her. I think I don't know if it was in this in this uh, in this save here in this rewind, but I asked her about where the time a serpent is. She doesn't know. Uh, so oh, there's more of these that I didn't see before. Uh, there's a lot of these that I didn't see before. I am blind. Holy crap. Um, yeah, but uh, there we are. We gained... I think I didn't lose the, the glue. I hope I didn't. Let's go. Magical items. Uh, Gale horn. Batch of sand. Nose plug. Pouch of sand, I mean. Not that. Uh, glue. Rope ladder. A message from Annalyn. A set of dice. Compass. Uh, yeah, I think I used up the, the glue, unfortunately. I, I don't see it over here. So, yeah. That's a shame. Yeah, I kind of wanted that, but... Well, it is what it is. I, I got a, the green thing, which is definitely good. There we go, let's leave. You bid Bria farewell and leave the hut. Chill wind sliced at your cloth, uh, at your cloak. There is strong and generous magic here, as often occurs high up. Um, let's cast a spell. What kind of spell do you want me to cast? Why, why is it necessary for me to cast the spell? Did you guys, by the way, see something flying in the air right there? Hmm. Remember that the serpents are winged. I could have cast the mag. Huh. Okay, that's that's interesting. I have the gob over here, which is for summon a goblin. Why would I want to do that? I'm not really sure. I have the sus here, which is sense danger. Uh, and I don't really need it, because uh, the danger is already passed. Uh, I have the... How, which is looking for pass safe passage. I have the fall, which is what we just cast. And I have the big, which is interesting as well. And that is that. The mag could have worked if I had cast it previously, but I don't know how, how it goes. Let's just make a move. And a few stones clattered away over the eastern slope. So we can go down the chimney 
or the pass. Back back this way, I suppose. Yeah, this is the chimney that I could ask her about, but I think I want to go this way. I think I want to go this way, and I want to explore as much as possible. Although, that's going to waste my time. I don't... I think... I... I... I don't know when, when the Fire Serpent is going to attack. I know what to kill it. So I'm going to go this way. I'm going to go back back this way and uh, not cross right now. This might be a bad a bad thing, but let's make a move. Smoke. Yeah, I know. I know. Let's go this way. We return the path, head back down the hillside. Yes. Slopes. You push on through the trees. Down a hill. And night is falling. You climb down the mountain and join the road. The afternoon is st starting to draw on. You are on the road junction once more. The aisle indicates the road appeal. Uh, let's walk on. You continue your journey. Is this uh, an interesting part? Let's go over there because we didn't, we weren't, we were there before. Didn't have anything. Once more, you enter the shadow of the cliffs that surround this place. Days are short out here. The evening is drawing in. The cliff face is covered in eyes, and you freeze. Then you realize they are the eyes of stone icons carved from the rock face itself, clustered as tightly as barnacles on a rock. Though. These are very different from the iguana icon on the road junction. A few coins line at the base of the cliff. Look at the coins first. You look at the scattered coins. They are an eclectic mixture, mixture of metals and currencies. Many are discolored from their time and on the ground. It is astonishing they have not been taken already. You spy two or three gold pieces in amongst them. I don't need them. Look at the icons. The icons are each about the size of a small dog and are carved wh wherever they could be made to fit. Some taking advantage of natural colors in the rock, buttresses and points. Each is a sub is subtly different and though they are stylized, they are clearly intended to be human. A woman approaches across the grass from the road. She looks familiar from somewhere, but you cannot place it. She nods to you, then stops at a cliff face to look at the icons. Okay, well... With that, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Sorcery. I really hope you've enjoyed it, and if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video, but above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.